usual to Jonathan Edwards for uh, giving us a reflection on God's Word this morning. But now it's time to pray with each other and for each other. And I'm joined this morning by the Reverend Simon Bickersteth, who is the vicar of St. James's Church here in Carlisle and who's part of the team of the Cornerstone Coffee Shop. Morning, Simon. Good morning. Thank you very much for having us here. We're delighted to have you. <laughs> well, we're going to find out more about what's happening at Cornerstone in general and Carlisle in particular in a few minutes' time. But first, we're going to pray together. And I know that you're going to join me uh, in that. So why don't why don't you start? Who are we praying? for first so we're going to start this morning uh, by praying for sonia so uh, sonia just asked for god's blessing on her life and for the peace of christ so heavenly father we commend sonia to you today and we just pray that she may know your love your peace uh, and your protection over her in jesus name amen we're also going to pray for Donna this morning. She says, please pray for me as I visit troubled families who don't love the Lord or know him. Teach me how to be and what to say. I can do nothing without your Holy Spirit. Uh, particularly praying for Claire, who's lost her job and who's been drinking. So Lord, we lift up Donna. Thank you for the work that she does, bringing your spirit and your love to people who don't know you yet. And we pray particularly for Claire. Lord, at this uh, really difficult time for her, I pray that you'd show her light at the end of the tunnel and uh, begin her on that journey of getting free from addiction we have a message here from sue who lives in portsmouth uh, who was watching the tv documentary last night about uh, the presenter tv presenter kate garraway and how she cared for her husband derek through the closing stages of his life and uh, sue writes that kate is such a pleasant and courageous lady could we please pray for her that through this tough experience she may come to know Jesus, the source of all compassion, and his care for her. Can we also please pray for her children and Derek's paid carer, Jake, for a similar revelation of Jesus? So let's pray first for them and then for others facing a similar situation. So Lord, we pray for Kate and her children and everyone who knew and loved Derek. Uh, we ask you to comfort them, Lord, in their grief and loss. And we do pray, especially today, for others facing a similar situation, those living with cancer, their families, those that care for them, and also, Lord, those who are experiencing the pain of bereavement. May they know your comfort and your peace and your love surrounding them. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh man, we're also praying for Graham this morning. We've been standing with Graham for quite a while now as he's been going through a difficult time with his employer and his mental health. Lord, we pray for good decisions to be made uh, for and with Graham. And we're also lifting up your 15-year-old daughter having problems with her friendship group at school. So difficult uh, at that period of your life. So Lord, particularly pray for Graham's daughter this morning, that she would know that she is loved by you. She's a daughter of the Most High God. I pray that she'll be able to lift up her head and have confidence as she goes into school today and there'll be peace in those friendships we also pray today for kathy who is going to hospital this morning to continue with ongoing treatment she's feeling apprehensive for the day ahead so lord we pray for kathy give her strength and understanding uh, as she faces this treatment and help her lord to keep her eyes fixed on jesus Amen. Amen. And Alison in Yorkshire, praying with you for Heather uh, from your church. She's been admitted to hospital with sepsis. She has to be transferred to another hospital uh, to drain fluid, and she's been very confused for the last few days. Lord, we lift up Heather this morning at this confusing time and a time of pain for her as well. Pray for your Holy Spirit uh, to be with her and uh, in her, and that she would have a speedy healing in Jesus' name. Simon, is there one, one more, a couple more to do there? Uh, well, I just want to uh, pray for a young child, actually, uh, part of our church fellowship. Uh, his name is Miles. He's a toddler uh, and he's got neuroplastoma, which is a very serious childhood cancer. Uh, his parents uh, regularly come to Cornerstone where we are today. So, Lord Jesus, we do pray for Miles. Uh, you know, Lord, what he is going through, the impact this cancer has had on his body, uh, the impact that the chemotherapy is having on his health. Uh, Lord, we pray for his parents, John and Danielle, and for his siblings. And we do ask in the name of Jesus Christ for a complete and total healing for this young child. And we pray for his family, Lord, as they are able to spend this week together back home in Carlisle before uh, Miles goes back to hospital next week to begin another round of very gruelling uh, chemotherapy. So we lift him and other families facing similar situation to Miles in our prayers today. 
Amen. Amen. Simon, thanks so much for joining me for this prayer time. We'll hear more from Reverend Simon Bickerseth a little bit later on. And of course, don't forget, I'll send all these prayers to Premier Lifeline, where the team will pray again. And any other prayers that come through during this morning's show, I will send on to them as well. And you can call Premier Lifeline between nine o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the afternoon uh, to chat and pray with someone on the phone. And the number is 0300 111 0101. Well, normally at this time of the day, we have a psalm, your favourite psalm. But this morning, we're joined by Andy Blake, who is the manager of the Cornerstone Coffee Shop. Morning, Andy. Good morning, Esther. Thank you very much for having us here. Very lovely to be here. Thank you for my coffee this morning, which has livened me up no end. (laughs) Tell me about the psalm that you're bringing to us today. Um, So this is Psalm 103. Uh, verses one to six uh, and this is a, a psalm that we use at our weekly wellbeing cafe that we host here in cornstone where we go through it line by line and we reflect on what it means to us but it also helps us to reflect on the many blessings that god has given us um, it's so easy to remember and focus on all the hard things and the difficult things that are going on in our lives um, so this psalm helps me to look beyond my circumstances to praise god regardless and to remember that he is able that he's able to help able to forgive and that he loves to love us so psalm 103 verse 1 to 6 praise the lord my soul all my innermost being praise his holy name praise the lord my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Amen. Amen. Andy, thank you so much. Psalm 103 for us this morning. Let's have a little bit of worship now. After that, we're going to look at the top stories that we're waking up to this morning. I'll never be more alone than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. Sing it loud. I'll never be more alone than I am right now. Sing it, Naomi.
beautiful song of worship for us this morning, Jaira from Maverick City and Friends. Good reminder to come to God for all our needs. It is 19 minutes past seven this Wednesday morning, a very special edition of Inspirational Breakfast coming to you live from the Cornerstone Cafe in Carlisle. Premier Christian Radio is out and about today. This afternoon, we're going to bring you, bring you some amazing stories uh, from Sunderland. But today, we're the other side of the country in the northwest, right on the borders between England and Scotland in the beautiful city of Carlisle. But let's have a look at today's top stories together. Authorities have called off the search for six people missing after a bridge collapsed in Baltimore, saying they're now presumed dead. It's a recovery effort now, 24 hours after a cargo ship hit the structure, sending vehicles tumbling into the frozen water below. Uh, in the UK, public satisfaction with the NHS has fallen to its lowest level ever. Fewer than one in four people in England, Scotland and Wales were satisfied with it in 2023. And another health story, it's claimed that giving out free vapes to smokers at A&E departments could help thousands more people quit each year. And a quick look at the papers this morning as well. The Times leads with a photo of the bridge accident in Baltimore, saying that a May Day call, which happened just before the ship hit the bridge, helped to save lives. The Telegraph, the Daily Mail and the Daily Express are all leading with the church's relationship with asylum seekers again. This comes after sources from the Home Office warned that churches risk undermining the integrity of the asylum system after the chemical uh, Clapham chemical attacker Abdulazidi, who claimed to be a Christian convert, failed a government test on Christianity. I do wonder what that test entails. The I paper has gone with a potential rise in the state pension age to 68 to help pay for the government's triple lock pledge. And The Guardian says the CBI, an organisation representing nearly 200,000 businesses, stops staff discussing sexual misconduct and bullying claims. Well, that's what's on the papers, but now it's time to look through the news through the lens of our guest this morning, the Reverend John Libby. Morning, John. Morning to you. Now, we're here at Cornerstone Cafe in Carlisle. I gather you were a part of the original team for this. How long ago was that? Gosh, that must be about uh, 13, 14, 15 years ago. So it must be amazing for you sitting in here, seeing That's it wonderful. thriving. Yeah, you know, seeing Andy and the team and Simon and the team uh, moving things forward here. Fantastic. But you now have got a, a more global role, I gather. Well, I look after something called the Langham Partnership, which, which does operate in over 100 countries of the majority world. But we have our international service centre here in Carlisle. And what does the Langham Partnership do? Well, we operate through three main programme strands. We look after global literature, uh, where we resource particularly academic theology, but also some general accessible devotional work from Indigenous authors and distribute that around the world. Then we also sponsor a whole raft of PhD scholars uh, from, uh, again, majority world countries, uh, on condition that they return to their majority world in church leadership or state leadership in some way. And so each year we've got about 100 of those in, in training uh, for their PhD. And then lastly, we run a global preaching uh, network which uh, teaches and trains folk how to communicate the scriptures more effectively. And that can only be done if they understand it more effectively themselves, ourselves. And so that operates around the world as well. Right, so you've got a, a global view. Well, I wonder what's uh, piqued your interest in, in your news feed this morning. Well, I don't think we can ignore the bridge, can we? I mean, it's an extraordinary thing as we saw it unfolding on our screens. I guess the legitimate um, question for a person of faith to ask is, what on earth is going on here? Where is God in this? Is is, has God averted through uh, people built in his image that it's only six or eight people that were dramatically effective. I mean, that would be a, a reasonable position. It could have been an absolute disaster. But then what comfort or compassion is that to the six families grieving uh, this morning as well, assuming that no one turns up now that the, um, now that their search has been called off? So we've got that tension as ever. Uh, between what's good, what's bad, and where should our prayers be focused? And of course, it's such an extraordinary, I mean, if anyone's seen it, the the, the shot of the bridge no. crumbling, uh, you know, it's very dramatic, very shocking. Um, and there's that sense that, you know, our human structures, when they when they tumble, they, they just 
disappear. There's there's something sort of quite mm. Old Testament about that in a yeah. funny sort of way, don't you think? Yeah, uh, four seconds and it was all over. But again, we need to remember, I suggest today, that um, around the world, if you were to go to Ukraine or Gaza or places, these disasters are happening at the impact of a bomb or a missile every day. So here is something iconic that's caught our attention. But maybe it is some kind of, um, I don't know, iconic reminder of the world that we live in. One of the things we're living in, of course, is a, a time of conflict. And I know that's the, the subject of your second story this morning. Well, I was just reflecting on uh, what's going on in American foreign policy and uh, the way in which they abstained in the vote in the Security Council, which has enabled a, a condemning uh, resolution on both parties, actually, to uh, desist and to have a, a ceasefire. And I just was thinking, whatever our position in this conflict is, then we need to be wary as Christians of starting to defend the indefensible uh, on either side. That, you know, there are atrocities, I suggest, in, in, in all of those uh, operations uh, since uh, October the 7th. So the, the question is... Can we in any way encourage the communities, the Palestinian and the Israeli communities, as distinct from their leaders, of forcing on their leadership a desire for peace, which will involve presumably a change of leadership? Both of those are under threat, we understand from sources. But it, how do you reach beyond those that have now got a, a vested interest in maintaining their position as the head of a community uh, to try and get people suing for peace genuinely on either side and not any of us uh, sitting in a, an entrenched position trying to justify something that is now appalling on both both aspects. And it's interesting, isn't it? And there's so much more to say on this and uh, running short of time. Uh, but that but that sense of as as the time as the months go on now in this conflict, actually, we, we have to recognise that it's uh, it's complex and, and you can't take uh, a, a binary black and white view of it, no. can you? Um, uh, and we pray for wisdom for the leaders involved and those who should be involved. Yeah, absolutely. And a final story from you today, yeah, well, let's, John. Uh, let's change gear a little bit and let's focus for a moment, if we may, on Alan Titchmarsh's trousers. Now, why are we <laughs> focusing on Alan Titchmarsh's trousers? I've never given them a second thought, well, I must that's say. Well, a relief to hear, but um, I think probably if you were in North Korea, uh, you were looking at the television uh, last week, you will have seen all... Alan Titmarsh's trousers, but only in a blurred form. Evidently, they showed a version of uh, Secret Garden from 2010. I mean, that's the first extraordinary thing. What on earth in North Korea are they doing showing a 2010 version of Alan Titchmarsh in Gar Secret Garden? But, but the issue was, are not trousers uh, a, a statement of Western imperialism? and decadence. And the, the thought that I, I took away from that is, um, if we really are that obviously decadent to another culture, then perhaps each of us, when we look at our wardrobes and we look at our behavior, should have a representative from that uh, uh, culture whispering in our ear against the sort of decadence and choices we have, in this case, uh, to do with denim jeans. It was denim jeans. I was going to say, well, were they gold lame sequin sort of balloon pants or something? <laughs> well, the ones that were blurred were denim jeans, put it that way. Yeah. Well, I never. Alan Titchmarsh on the on the cutting edge of fashion. Uh, wonderful to th thank you. I'm, I'm, the mind boggles about that story. Uh, John, thank you so much for sharing your news speech with us this morning. And it's really wonderful to be here with you all here in Carlisle. Well, coming up, uh, Toller is going to bring you the very latest news. After that, we're going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into uh, mission and outreach here in Carlisle. The churches are working together in a brilliant way to reach their communities with the good news of Jesus. And we'll be unpacking what that looks like here in Carlisle and getting some tips for us wherever we are around the country. So do stay with us. Premier Christian Radio, your voice of hope. Mercy Ships brings you a story of unwavering love. Sadio had watched his young son, Malang, struggle to walk. His legs curved outwards from malnutrition. He faced a lifetime of pain. Sadio spent his hard-earned money in hospitals, but no one could help. A last ray of hope came when Mercy Ships arrived in Senegal. 
On Mercy Ships, we do complex orthopedic surgery to straighten legs of children with very severe limb deformities. Thanks to you, Dr. Rachel Buckingham, a surgeon and volunteer with Mercy Ships, performed Milan's life-changing operation. Today, Sadio is full of hope for his son's future. The difference that we make to people's lives is enormous. Make this Easter a time of hope. Help a child like Malang find free surgery and take their first steps to a new life. Give now at mercyships.org.uk slash Easter. We all reap what we sow, or so the saying goes. So for expert, independent financial advice you can trust, call the Harvest Partnership now on free phone 0800 276 1066 and ask for your copy of How to Invest. It's absolutely free. According to Louise... Technically speaking, it's brilliant. That's 0800 276 1066 or visit us at harvestpartnership.com. The Harvest Partnership, authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. 0800 276 1066. It's a mic drop moment at Christian Conference Trust because we have some of the lowest prices around for all-inclusive quality venues. And this summer, Highly in the Haze will be joined by Highgate House in Northamptonshire, the UK's newest Christian Conference Centre. Visit cct.org.uk now. Christian Conference Trust, where the church gathers. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary, and now is the time to join us. AsiaLink empowers Christians in Asia to serve Jesus among their people. We're ready to send 25 Asian workers to share the gospel from Tajikistan to Thailand and from Pakistan to the Philippines. Your gift of £25 can help make it happen. Challenge 25 is on. Help 25 new Asian workers share the gospel in new places at asialink.org. Easter is just around the corner. A celebration of new life, of hope and happiness. Share the joy of Easter with friends and loved ones. At Premier Christian Marketplace, discover unique decorations, joyful greeting cards, delicious chocolate eggs and so much more that symbolise this very special time. For faith-inspired gifts this Easter, visit premierchristianmarketplace.co.uk. Sign up to our newsletter for special offers and discounts. This Lent, journey with us as we unwrap spiritual disciplines to help your walk with Jesus. From worship to confession, reading your Bible or deepening your prayer life, explore the many practices which can lead to a richer Christian life right here on Premier Christian Radio. Premier Christian Radio, your voice of hope. On air, online and on digital. This is Premier Christian Radio. Hello, I'm Tola Mbakwe. Authorities have called off the search for six people missing after a bridge collapsed in Baltimore, saying they're now presumed dead. It's now a recovery effort 24 hours after a cargo ship hit the structure, sending vehicles tumbling into the chilly water below. Public satisfaction with the NHS has fallen to its lowest ever level. Fewer than one in four people in England, Scotland and Wales were satisfied with it in 2023, with most pointing to poor access to GPs and long waits for hospital treatment. It's claimed giving out free vapes to smokers at A&E departments could help thousands more people quit each year. Researchers say it would help people who are less likely to use other stop smoking services. Wales have failed to qualify for Euro 2024 after losing on penalties to Poland last night. Their playoffs in Cardiff finished goalless after extra time. Former President Donald Trump is now selling Bibles as he runs to return to the White House. Mr. Trump, who became the presumptive Republican nominee earlier this month, released a video on his Truth Social platform yesterday. He urged his supporters to buy the God Bless the USA Bible, which is inspired by country singer Lee Greenwood's patriotic ballad. And an NHS doctor is urging people not to eat a whole Easter egg in one go, leading to a backlash on social media. Dr. Andrew Kelso, who's a medical doctor in Suffolk and North East Essex, is calling for moderation. That's your Premier News update. Inspirational Breakfast with Esther Hyam. 
A very good morning to you from Carlisle in Cumbria, where we are out and about this morning on Inspirational Breakfast. In a few minutes, we're going to be finding out how different churches around uh, the city are reaching out to their communities. But I want to know from you, wherever you're listening from this morning, Next time we're out and about, why should we come to your area? Where would you take us to and why? Send me your stories, your thoughts, your recommendations, please, to studio at premier.org.uk or text me double six triple seven. starting your message with the word Premier. This morning, we're live from the Cornerstone Coffee Shop in Carlisle. Where should we come to next and why? Do let me know. Premier Christian Radio, your voice of hope. Now, as I've said, we're live this morning from the historic city of Carlisle. Thanks to the Cornerstone Cafe who are hosting us here. Let me paint the picture for you. This is a brilliant uh, corner shop. It's on the corner of two streets in a uh, on a little town centre just on the outskirts of the city centre. The coffee machine is brewing up. Uh, the croissants are ready for their free community breakfast, which starts at eight o'clock. Uh, there are bookshelves of secondhand books to give away. There's beautiful cards behind me is a little bookshop with Bibles to buy. Uh, There are toys for children to play with. And all in all, it's just a brilliant community space where many people are finding a home and also finding Jesus as well. We're going to be finding out more about that in just a moment. But here in Carlisle, it's a city of contrast in many ways. It's a historic city. It starts, uh, one end of Hadrian's Wall starts here. It has show-stopping nature on its doorstep. It's It's at the northern edge of the Lake District. It's a regular a stopping point for walkers, cyclists and road trippers. But like every city, it's got its struggles as well. 16 of its neighbourhoods are in the lowest 20% of household incomes in the country. So how are churches reaching out to people in Carlisle and what tips can we pick up from them wherever we are in the UK? The Reverend Simon Bickersteth is the vicar of St James's Church in Carlisle. He's also the rural dean for the area. Caroline Hetherington is an elder at Hebron Evangelical Church. She's also the community volunteer manager at Safe Families for Children. And the Reverend John Libby has stayed on after his brilliant news review. He was part of the team uh, that started the Cornerstone Cafe and now runs a global charity as well. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. morning. So, Caroline, uh, tell me the highs of Carlisle. What's great about living here? Oh, well, I've lived here for 16 years um, and yeah, I love it. The, it. It's quite a small community. So when you go into town, you meet people that you know, you come into Cornerstone, you meet people that you know. Um, the sun does shine, believe it or not. Um, and yeah, it just has a, a, a small city feel where you can feel like you can connect uh, to others. And John, uh, you know a little bit about the history, so I sort of skimmed over it there, but I imagine yeah, there are centuries of it. Tell, tell us a little bit about that, that, the potted history of Carlisle. Well, that's almost impossible, but um, <laughs> you were just making the comment about uh, Hadrian's Wall earlier, and this is where uh, the wall was set up from. We tend these days to think a lot more about the east end of the wall and Newcastle, and I'm a Geordie born and bred, so wouldn't resent that, but actually the focus of the wall and the border was on the west side of Carlisle for several centuries. Have you walked it? Oh, yes, uh, on a couple of occasions, and it's well worth doing. Well worth doing. Definitely, definitely on my list of things to do. Simon, you're uh, you're you're here at St James's Church in Carlisle, but you're also the what they call the rural dean in the, the Church yes. of England. What does that mean? And tell me a little bit about the the rural edges of Carlisle. So the role of a rural dean is uh, that I have a. I suppose a bit of an oversight role within the Anglican churches within the deanery of Carlisle. So that includes the city of Carlisle, but the deanery also extends along the Solway Firth uh, and down to the Scottish border. Um, So uh, in the Carlisle deanery, we do have quite a large rural area, lots of rural villages, uh, small parish churches and so forth. And of course, you know, coming up on the train from London yesterday, you just cut through the most stunning scenery as you come through the Lake District. How much is the Lake District part of life in Carlisle or does it feel like a, an, another country in another, in some ways? I, I think many of us in Carlisle spend a lot of time in the Lake District. It's just down the road. Um, we get there very quickly. Um, but we also have other wonderful scenery on our doorstep. Um, Hadrian's Wall, Northumberland, uh, Scotland's only nine miles up the road, uh, the Solway coast. So we're sport for choice. I think Carlisle is an ideally located city 
brilliant place to come and live. <laughs> this section was sponsored by the Carlisle Tourist Board, clearly. But uh, 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 John, what about spiritually? I'm always interested uh, when you get to know the, the history of a place, how much it affects uh, the spiritual reality. Do you have a sense on that as a, as a centre of lots of historic battles? Does that come through spiritually in any way? I think the variety comes through quite a bit and uh, certain areas have um, uh, a, a certain darkness in them, in a sense, and a, a foreboding almost, uh, and therefore uh, one's called fairly often into ministries in houses and homes where there is a sense of dislocation and whatever. But in actual fact, I'd say the main thing about Carlisle is for 100,000 people, if you include some of the adjacent uh, small towns, uh, that's about the total, there's about 40 different churches, which means on a ratio of people to churches, the church is very evenly distributed. Uh, through the city. And so there's an extraordinary range, be it um, uh, Baptist, Anglican, Catholic, Methodist, Free Church, Evangelical, uh, Salvation Art. There's a huge variety. And so there is the possibility to interact with that variety, no matter where you are and who you are. And Caroline, you're you're from the Hebron Evangelical Church. How, how well, it sounds like the churches work well together. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the secret of that? Because it doesn't happen everywhere. <laughs> um, I don't know what the secret is, but I do know that uh, the church leaders gather once a month to pray and to fellowship and to to share ideas and to talk. Um, and I think that's bringing a, a, a great unity amongst the churches so that the city, the people of the city can see churches working together. And I think that's something historically that's been done, um, not just not just that's going on now. So, um, yeah, we talk to each other and I think that's that's a great place to start. Simon, just to bring you in here and we can hear the team at Cornerstone Cafe getting ready for their community breakfast. Uh, cups clinking in the background as they're getting uh, set out for visitors who are going to be arriving soon. Cornerstone meets the needs of the community really well, but unpack for me a little bit, Simon, of what those needs are. I suppose it's typical of, of many places around the country, but uh, we serve particularly a part of Carlisle called Denton Home. Um, and Denton Home has all the sort of needs that you would find in any urban area. Uh, there's a lot of loneliness, um, people struggling with addiction problems, um, and you know the whole the whole host of things that you'd find anywhere. And what we're trying to do here through Cornerstone is provide a, a safe place where people can meet, uh, where we can build community, and where we can hopefully share Christ with them. What happens when someone comes in and, and talks about you know, having a need, uh, whether it's financial or, or, or wants to con confess they're struggling with addiction? What happens next? So we tr we have to recognise that there's a limit in sometimes what we can do. So we try to signpost people to organisations that can help them. Um, often it's about trying to provide a safe place where people know that they can come, that they won't be judged, that they will be loved. Uh, so, and, and we have all sorts of different people coming in here, all, all different backgrounds. Uh, Cornerstone has a reputation for being a welcoming place. Um, we're very fortunate that we have a, a team of loyal volunteers who help run the cafe along with our paid members of staff. Um, and we, we try to reach out to the community as much as possible. So we do various different things during the week. We have a conversation cafe on a Monday afternoon for asylum seekers. Uh, on a Wednesday, we have our free community breakfast, uh, which is well attended um, by families preparing to go to school, but also individuals, people by themselves. Uh, on Thursdays, we do a Renew Wellbeing Cafe. Uh, that's from 10 o'clock to one o'clock. And again, uh, lots of different people come here and the strap line for the Renew Wellbeing Cafes is it's OK not to be OK. Uh, on a Thursday afternoon, we do an after school drop in. Uh, so you get lots of children coming in for their hot chocolates and again, building relationships. So, uh, and there's all, all sorts of other different activities and events, church outreach events going on here. So Cornerstone as part of the Ministry of St. James is a very busy hub. And how does how does the life of what happens in Cornerstone, how does that then filter into and impact the, the St. James's church community? Do the, is there sort of an open border between the two, as it were? Or do, have you seen people coming to faith through Cornerstone? We, we have seen people come to faith through Cornerstone and we have people who've 
joined the worshipping life of the church through Cornerstone. Uh, and I think increasingly we're, we're seeing more of that, which is really exciting. And that's all part of the original vision. And uh, John was, was uh, you know, instrumental in in the vision of building and developing Cornerstone. Um, I mean, there are, there are plenty of challenges as well. Um, it's, you know, we, as well as Cornerstone, we have a shop opposite us, uh, a charity shop, and, and resourcing this ministry for a church which isn't that particularly large is difficult, is challenging, both in terms of financially, in terms of volunteers and so forth. But but we are seeing people come to faith um, and uh, and the church having a, a big impact. This is, if you like, the, the open window of the church here in this community. And actually what's lovely sitting here is that it just feels like quite a cool, bright, smart, cafe it, it doesn't it doesn't feel too christian does it and i think that, yes. but in the yep. you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that was a big debate when we were designing the size the scope the scale the coloring the and and there was that big debate as to how comfortable do you want to make it for folk and uh, and how exclusive do you want to make it for folk and how attractive and how expensive and it's been quite a big game I mean, I think one of the things that I think is brilliant out of this place is the idea of buy one forward. Mm -hmm. I just think that typifies uh, a lot of what's happening here. And that's where people that come in who do have the means can buy their own coffee for them and their friends, but can also buy one or two coffees for people that will come in at some other stage who they don't know. And yet in some of the more uh, less wealthy parts of the parish, they know they can come here and ask for a coffee and it's already paid for by the church and by people that come to cornerstone as well and that interaction i think is critical that's such a brilliant spiritual principle as well isn't it mm. to pay it forward caroline you do some work with a charity called safer families uh, give me a bit of a deep dive on that so safe families believes that no one should be alone um and that we want to um encourage people to connect and feel belonging um and come into the family of god if we get the opportunity to share that message um we work with churches in partnership to um gather people to equip them to um uh, to do the work so as volunteers and we match them with families who are potentially lonely or isolated or struggling in a crisis or a difficult situation in their lives and we just do that to increase those connections a lot of the families we work with don't have uh, good social uh, networks um, and we want to increase that and widen their their networks of people that they can connect with so essentially we're trying to create friendships um, and that we're doing that in partnership with the local church and and Christians in the city. I gather here at Cornerstone uh, there's quite a lot of connection with the local authorities as well uh, with Job Centre and uh, I think the midwives are coming in yeah. later on as well. Um, Caroline how, do, how does the whole picture fit together because the church across the country is, is filling so many gaps in provision isn't it? I mean there's a food bank here which will be open mm -hmm. at nine o'clock as well we know you know we, we talk about it a lot on the show uh, how many communities have got food banks and how many families are depending and households are depending on them is there a breaking point at which the church just can't fill any more gaps? I mean, we were talking yesterday on the show about domestic violence and how the church needs to sort of get uh, informed on that so it can have safe spaces for women. But is there going to come a point where churches go, we just can't do anymore. We're basically doing the government's job. Or are we sort of claiming back ground that was always ours anyway, because we're supposed to be caring for the people in our communities? How does that picture look to you? I think churches are filled with compassionate people um, who want to love others. And I, I don't think we'll ever get to that stage. I think we'll always want to be a part of what's going on in the community and partner with what God's doing. So I really hope we don't ever get to that stage where we can't provide these things for, for people who need them. Um, and yeah, certainly at Hebron, we're, we're involved in, in different things. We run a meal bank um, on a Monday evening where we serve a hot meal for, for those that need it or those that actually just want to connect and just want to find relationship um, and that's an opportunity for us to 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 show God's love 
you know, we're the hands and feet of Jesus. We're serving a meal and um, providing that, as as Simon's already said, that space, safe space for people to come and uh, be warm and uh, and be listened to and be prayed for if they want to. Um, we're currently looking to start what we're calling a connect group, um, which is a space to worship, to hear stories, um, and to hear hear about the love of Jesus. So uh, to connect people into the family of God um, in that way. What's the right point to to do that? I mean, anyone who's a, a, a real evangelist listening this morning is like, tell them about Jesus straight away, yeah. get your hands on them and pray for them as soon as you can. Yeah. Others might say, listen, you want to meet the needs and build the trust. How do you decide at what point you say, listen, this is it. Do you want to know Jesus? Mm-hmm. I think you have to listen to the Father's heart on it and um, and listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and when he's leading you into these things. Um, Mealbank's been going for nine years um, and we have provided this practical help um, and what many would call a social action project. Um, and we've offered those opportunities to meet Jesus through conversation, through prayer. Um, but we felt a sense, um, a stirring really, that it was time that we've got a better story story we've got um the good news to share and it, it feels like the right time uh, now for us to be to be able to do that um it's sometimes hard for people to connect into sunday morning church um so to provide that um space on a, a monday evening when people are coming around the meal table and and they don't have to stay to hit to hear that message but if they want to and they want to hear um our motivation for why we do what we do then then they can and they can stay so yeah i think it's listening to the holy spirit's leading in in the project that you're doing and, and where you are yeah uh, simon what, what about you what, what is there a point or, or like how do you just have to sense it with each individual person I, I totally agree with what Caroline said. Um, I mean, Scripture says always be prepared to give a, a reason for the hope that you have. So, um, I, I, you know, I think it's about demonstrating practically the love of Jesus by the way that we care for people, but also making use of every opportunity just to share our faith. And it's not about forcing our faith onto people or crowbarring Jesus into conversations, but hopefully it just flowing out of who we are as Christians and, and just that love for Jesus and love for people that, that sort of connects. John, you've known Carlisle for a long time. You were part of the original uh, team setting up Cornerstone. Over the years, what have you seen change? Has there been a spiritual change or is, has things got harder? Well, how have things gone over the decades? I think things fluctuate uh, as in any community. Um, the relationships, the profile, the mistakes and the things that go well echo uh, around a small community. Again, what folk have shared earlier, that you walk through town and you always bump into people that you know. And so it's got that village thing. It's also large enough to be anonymous a bit when when you want. I think, though, there is an aspect of Carlisle that we haven't shared yet, and that is there are three or four international mission organizations that have their headquarters here. So not just um, the operation I'm proud to serve, which is the Langham Partnership. Uh, There's also Operation Mobilization, which uh, runs a lot of stuff here, from here. And people might know the Carlisle Address because of historically STL, Send the Light, used to publish and distribute from Carlisle as well. So there's quite an influx of mature leadership in those organizations as well, which I think serves the church. And I'm, although the day job is with Langham, I'm uh, an honorary member of the staff team at St. Michael's in Stanix, right at the end of uh, the wall, uh, just the other side. And there we've had to take um, significant decisions. You need leadership and you need resources uh, to continue uh, an initiative. And it's trying to pull together to train and resource those teams. That is the the critical thing, I suggest. So a wealth of leadership here. We are in the middle of of Holy Week, of course. Mm. And I just wonder, as as we ramp up to Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and of course, Easter Sunday. uh, Simon, what for you is the the message of Easter that you hope will, will touch people in Carlisle this week? I think hope. You know, hope is at the heart of the Christian message, you know, that we have a God who loves us, a God who came to be with us. And that message of hope is so important, it's always been important. But I think in the world we're living in at the moment, the society we're living in, there's a lot of people who are despairing, who are anxious, who are fearful of the future. Uh, the world is quite a scary place at times. Uh, and so the message of Easter is is one about hope 
the hope that we find in Jesus, and that's timeless. I like. What, what about you? What, what, and look, people are now arriving. I just need to say, you can hear uh, guests <laughs> arriving at the Cornerstone Coffee Shop. There's a free community breakfast every Wednesday. Uh, so it's really lovely to see people coming in, mums with their kids in prams, uh, kids on their way to school as well. You can hear the, the friendly welcome coming from Andy and the team. I'm going to hope to meet some of these people as well. But Caroline, with the uh, Holy Week upon us, what's the message of Easter for you? I think I echo Simon's words really, you know, we, we, we personally have found that hope in Jesus in relationship with him. Um, and I think part of what I just want to do is invite other people, um, into that and to know the love of Jesus and the fullness of life that you can find in him. Um, yeah. Do you sense that people know the Easter story? Something we talked about on the show a couple of weeks ago is actually had, you know, has in general, has culture lost its connection with Jesus at Easter? What do you sense from the people that you work with? Um, potentially, I think it's a very familiar story for some. Um, it's it's maybe something they learn at school, um, and uh, part of what as churches that we want to do is bring that alive again and, and bring a fresh, um, fresh perspective, I guess, um, with fresh eyes. So, yeah. John, do you think we're starting from sort of ground zero with some people explaining you know, who Jesus was and, and why he had to die? I, I, I think certainly there is that. Um, I think probably the impact of Easter that needs greater exposure by the church is Christ died for all. It's not an exclusive club in the church that um, we get together to celebrate this event. It's We're all sinners, and when we were far off, uh, Christ died for us. And Easter is just the the massive beacon of that, and yet somehow we've uh, managed to somehow contain that uh, and not crack it open and share it. So it's a time for sharing. And finally, with just a, a cu couple of minutes before we have to go to the news, I did promise that we would share some tips for how to reach out to your community. I wonder if any of you just got one simple tip if someone's thinking, oh, I've always wanted to start a coffee shop uh, in, in my area, or I've always wanted to connect with the authorities to do something better. Uh, any any quick <laughs> tips on that? I think I, it, it's, it's, it's sort of, it's probably the answer you everyone would expect, but you know, you start with prayer and, and you, you seek what God is doing and, and, and what God's doing in the community. Uh, and, and they say mission is about seeing what God's doing and joining in with what God's doing. So, so begin with prayer and ask God, what's he doing? What does he want to do? Caroline, quick tip from you. I would say if you want to connect with people who in your community, go to the Safe Families website. Um, and have a look, do a bit of research, and then yeah, see if you if you think volunteering's for you. John, one from you. I think be generous. Uh, a lot of things are started with a view of raising funds, but actually get out there and give. You know, we serve a God who owns the cattle on a, a thousand hills or or whatever. Get out there and give, and I think then look at the way in which God re will resource you. Yeah. You know? Thank you so much. Loads more inspiration coming your way from us here live at the Cornerstone, Cornerstone Coffee Shop here in Carlisle. But Toller's going to bring you the latest news in just a moment and I'll be right back here after that. Premier Christian Radio, your voice of hope. Easter is more than chocolates and hunting for eggs. It's the reason we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So join us right here on Premier Christian Radio to learn more and find hope in Christ. At YMCA, we're changing lives across Scotland. We stand with young people in poverty, offering support and hope. We nurture mental well-being to help young people thrive. We equip those facing bullying to cope and rise above. We mentor and train to unlock the potential for meaningful work. Because of YMCA, young people in Scotland are not just surviving, but growing in body, mind and spirit. Your support can change a life. To discover more or make a donation, visit ymca.scot. In Holy Week, we journey with Jesus to Jerusalem. Join me, Canon John Twistleton, in the days before Easter to celebrate the power of the cross as we centre on Christ's substitution and sacrifice for us, his triumph over evil and gift of love. That's the power of the cross, 5.30 p.m. from Monday the 25th of March through to Monday Thursday here on Premier Christian Radio. You can also listen again at premier.plus forward slash Easter. 
Easter is just around the corner. A celebration of new life, of hope and happiness. Share the joy of Easter with friends and loved ones. At Premier Christian Marketplace, discover unique decorations, joyful greeting cards, delicious chocolate eggs and so much more that symbolise this very special time. For faith-inspired gifts this Easter, visit premierchristianmarketplace.co.uk. Sign up to our newsletter for special offers and discounts. I had 68p in my wallet, no food in the house, the children saying, Mum, I'm hungry, and I couldn't do anything. Not being able to actually feed your children is the lowest point you can get. You're still working really, really hard, but you're not getting anywhere. Crumbled me and crumbled Jenny. We never would have been able to come through this as a family without the help from CAP. This is the heartbreaking reality for too many. But you can help change a family's story by supporting Christians Against Poverty. Your gift of £10 can help a family with debt. Visit capuk.org forward slash premier now. Let's fight poverty together. You probably think you're pretty good at multitasking behind the wheel. I mean, you have to multitask to drive. So what's wrong with checking your phone? The thing is, your brain simply doesn't work. Even a quick look at the message, for quick reply, affects your concentration and makes you less able to react to hazards. If you use a mobile phone while driving, you're four times more likely to crash. Think. Put your phone away. On air, online, and on digital, this is Premier Christian Radio. Hello, I'm Toa Mbakwe. A search and rescue operation for survivors of a collapsed bridge in the U.S. city of Baltimore has been suspended. Rear Admiral Shannon Gilreath from the U.S. Coast Guard says the mission's now a recovery effort. Based on the length of time that we've gone in the search, the extensive search efforts that we've put into it, the water temperature, that at this point we do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. A cargo ship struck the major bridge yesterday morning, sending large parts plunging into the water below. Six people, thought to be construction workers, remain unaccounted for. Israel's military says it's examining claims a medical facility in Gaza was struck by one of its tanks. February's attack on the building, which was housing 64 people, killed family members of two Doctors Without Borders staff and injured seven others. The IDF insists it fired at a site where terror activity was being carried out, but hasn't provided evidence. Melini Nikolai is Director General of the aid group. We notify the GPS coordinates to the Israeli army to say, this is a medical structure. Our staff saw the tanks coming. Without any warning, a shell entered the building, exploded and killed two people on the spot. Documents revealing why Clapham chemical attacker Abdul Azedi, a convicted sex offender, was granted asylum have been made public for the first time. He targeted a woman and two children with an alkali on a South London street in January. The 35-year-old from Afghanistan had twice been refused asylum by the Home Office after arriving in the UK in 2016, but Sky's Becky Johnson says he reapplied after converting to Christianity. The Home Office, we now know from these documents, rejected that. They didn't believe that it was a genuine conversion. They didn't believe that he was a Christian. But he took the case to a tribunal in Newcastle, which in October 2020 granted him asylum despite that troubling past. The Church of Scotland has set out its position in favour of ending conversion practices in the country, urging the Scottish government to ban conversion therapy. It comes after a consultation to end the practice was published in January. The legislation seeks to protect against the change or suppression of a person's sexual orientation and gender identity and ensures religious freedom and the right to family and private life are upheld. And former President Donald Trump is now selling Bibles as he runs to return to the White House. Mr. Trump, who became the presumptive Republican nominee earlier this month, released a video yesterday urging his supporters to buy the God Bless the USA Bible. And your weather for today, some sunshine, although showery outbreaks of rain too, and rather windy. That's your latest from the Premier News team. For more stories from a Christian perspective, head to premierchristian.news. Inspirational Breakfast is sponsored by The Harvest Partnership, where pensions and investments work together at the same time in perfect harmony. Inspirational Breakfast. 
with Esther Hyam. And we are having a very exciting Wednesday morning. Premier Christian Radio is out and about today. We're having a smashing time. There we go. We just heard a plate drop there. We're here live at the Cornerstone Cafe in Carlisle, which is a brilliant project right in the community here in Carlisle, run by a brilliant team from St. James's uh, Church. Andy, the cafe manager, has arrived within nanoseconds with his broom and his dustpan sweeping up the debris there. We're in the middle of the uh, community breakfast here and let me just paint the scene for you there's probably about 25 children here with their parents and carers all tucking into croissants and apple juice and coffee uh, before they go to school as it's holy week they've all been given a chocolate egg as well uh, so there's a real celebratory feel here in the cafe this morning it's a real joy to be here Wherever you're listening from in the country, though, I'd love to know from you, where should we come to next? Where is there a brilliant project or a brilliant landmark that we could come and have breakfast at and meet you and your friends? Do get in touch, studio at premier.org.uk or text me double six triple seven, starting your message with the word premier and tell me where we should come to next and why. But also between now and nine o'clock, we're going to be hearing some amazing stories of lives changed as well. So do stay with me. But now I want to introduce you to uh, a young man called Noah, who's here at the uh, Cornerstone Coffee Shop this morning. Morning, Noah. Can you say hello? Yes, I am. Hello. Hello. How old are you? Five. Five. But you're nearly? Six. When's your birthday? In April. So not long to go now at all. Tell me what you like about Cornerstone and why you've come today. Um, um if if um, a child um wants to play with someone, um, um someone doesn't want to play with someone, um, someone could play with the child. So there's lots of friends here to play with. Yes. And are there any toys or fun things to do here as well? Yeah. What kind of things? Um, books. Do you like reading? What are your favourite kind of books? Spider-Man. Oh, who doesn't love Spider-Man? Fantastic. And what did you have for breakfast today? What did you choose? Um, chocolate. Chocolate for breakfast? It's not even a holiday time. Did you get a special kind of chocolate this morning? Chicken. Did you get an egg-shaped chocolate? And why, why did you get a chocolate egg today? Because it's nearly Easter. What, what do you know about Easter? What happens at Easter? The Easter Bunny King. Oh, yeah. And what does the Easter Bunny do? Um, give you chocolate eggs. That's very kind of it. And is there anybody, anybody else that's involved with Easter? Is there another story that's part of Easter that you know about? Um. Jesus. Tell me about Jesus. He died on the cross for our sins. And then what happened after that? He came back to life and he went to heaven. And what, what do you think about that story? Um, he's the son of God. That's amazing. And how did you find out all about that? Do you, do you go to church or did you hear about it here at Cornerstone? I go to church. And what happens at your church? Um. We um, learn about Jesus. Do you sing any good songs? Yeah. What's your favourite? Um, Who's the king of the jungle? Who's the king of the jungle? Should we give it a go? You're going to start it. Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Who's the king of the sea? Universe and the jungle and the sea. I'll tell you. G J U S U S. Yes. He's the king of me. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea. Round of applause for Noah. 
<laughs> no, you've been amazing. Thank you so much this morning. Uh, Becca, do you want to tell me a little bit about why you got I'm coming to talk to you in a few minutes? Oh, well, we're yeah. going to hear a bit more about Becca that in a few wonderful. minutes. Thank you so much for joining us here on the <laughs> Thank show. You. Uh, that's Noah joining in with the community breakfast here uh, at Cornerstone Cafe. I hope you were singing along to Who's the King of the Jungle. I don't think I've sung that for years. What a treat. Well, listen, we're going to have a bit of worship now and then we're going to catch up with one of the big news stories of the day. Premier Christian Radio, your voice of hope. Today even began if we haven't had a little bit of worship from Graham Kendrick. That is, of course, rejoice, rejoice. You can hear the buzz behind me. We are broadcasting live this morning from the Cornerstone Cafe in Carlisle, where you can hear the sound of, I think, 20 or 30 happy school kids having breakfast with their parents and carers before they go off to school. It's just one of the many things Cornerstone does to reach its community here in Carlisle. But wherever you're listening from this morning, I've been asking you, where should we come to next? Where is great in your area? It could be an outreach project like Cornerstone. It could be an absolutely stunning church building that we need to come to. Uh, it could be right in the middle of the most beautiful landmark in your area. Let me know where we should come to. Studio at premier.org.uk. Text me double six triple seven, starting your message with the word premier. Alison in Yorkshire, just down the road from where we are, says, I would love to show you around the Edge Centre, which is run by my church on Thursday mornings. It offers advice and support in finances and other areas. I'd introduce you to the team who volunteer every morning and I'd also show you the library run by my church and the nursery which is used as a cafe church on Sunday morning. Sounds absolutely brilliant. Alison, just let us know the details and we will be there. Where else should we come to in the country? I love getting out and about and it's brilliant to hear what God is doing around the nations. So do get in touch. Studio at premier.org.uk Text me double six triple seven starting with the word premier and uh, we'll see if we can book ourselves in. Now, poor mental health reportedly cost society £300 billion in 2022. That's double the NHS budget. A study by the Centre for Mental Health says low mood resulted in absence from work, reduced quality of life and increased spending on care. It found a failure to invest in early intervention made the country poorer. So what do we need to do about that as Christian communities around the UK Corinne Pilling is the UK Director of Sanctuary Mental Health. He's come to give us his take on that this morning. Good morning, Corinne. Hey, good morning, Esther. It's really lovely uh, to be with you. Nice to see you again. Uh, and as you can hear, we're here live from a brilliant outreach here in Carlisle, which on a Thursday, if we were here tomorrow, uh, runs a mental health and wellbeing cafe. So they're already uh, ahead of the curve. But what are the other things uh, that the church needs to be doing to try and meet those mental health needs in our communities? Well, it's, I, I was really inspired by this report because I think what it's basically saying is that this is no longer a, um, an issue that we can all ignore. And um, the church has a really big part to play. And uh, places like the one you're in, which is basically 
opening up space for us to um, experience well-being is a really important part of that. But we need to continue to go on a journey where I think a conversation around mental health becomes central to who we are as Christians. And I think there's a real need for us to think about how we engage in that. You know, so many of these headlines hit us and it's very easy to feel quite disempowered. You think, wow, you know, all of that money that we need to invest in our infrastructure to support our mental health. Of course, that's true. But the thing is, it's also a call to action for us. It's also saying if this is a growing issue, how are we responding within our communities? How much does it help to put a figure like three hundred billion pounds on? Uh, is that measuring the wrong thing, or is it helping mental health issues come further up the agenda? It's a, well, in many ways, it's a lobbying tool, isn't it? You know, the figures will always grab our attention. Um, it's and you know, it's important to recognise that there is an actual cost to this. That the reality is, you know, our mental health is something that's made up of all of these really key parts of who we are, whether it's to our housing, whether it's to do with our economic situation, our relationships, um, as well as our circumstances and our opportunities. So putting a figure on it's really good. When it's a problem, I think, is when we look at it and think, well, there's nothing we can do. And the opposite's true. And I think the challenge that, you know, a, a organisation like Sanctuary and others working within this field would say is, look, what are we doing that's part of our contribution? And the thing that the Centre for Mental Health put out um, in September, which is part of this campaign, I was really encouraged by, and they were asking everybody to look at these three areas of prevention, equality and support. And I think churches can be part of that agenda. We can think about, well, you know, what does prevention look like? And Sanctuary, our offer to churches is, is a free course. And we think that the most important thing is for every church to feel confident about a conversation about mental health in a way that's faith informed, but also at the heart of it has really good um, contemporary understanding of what mental health is because it makes our community safer and it helps us to be a place where we know how to support one another. So that's certainly a part that we can play as well as these community activities that start to really engage directly with saying, well, what does good wellbeing look like within, within our context? You talked there about prevention. Uh, this uh, study talks about early intervention. Is that, is that the next step? So if prevention is understanding what good mental health is. Uh, what, what does inter early intervention look like? When do we start to sense uh, that something's gone from just feeling a bit low to uh, a, a deeper problem? It's a deeply personal thing, but it's really important that we we're all on a journey where we're not in denial of that. And, and often I'll have conversations with with some people who say, well, listen, we've done all right until now. Why are we in a situation where it seems like mental health is always on the agenda? And what I say to that is it's good that we are, because what it will do is if we the earlier we spot that we are declining, the more action we can take around that. Now, for some of us, that might not always need to be a medical step. Um, for many, it's very important that we do see a GP when we see that we're declining. For others, it might be a case of, hang on, I'm, I'm experiencing some, some low mood at the moment. Am I connected to people that I need to be around, you know, those that can be supportive? Am I doing activities that are helpful to me? What, you know, things like what? does my diet look like you know even just being attuned to the fact that we are those are things that will change and we can have some control over can be very helpful but equally when we've gone through a period where you know we, we're realizing that things are getting more difficult it might be there may be a number of um, symptoms that present in that that we can feel really confident that we, we we can access help when we need it that's so important and I think there is a lack of confidence around getting the right help when people need it and so our job I think is to ensure that we can really encourage and and if people don't get the help in the moment that we can be people that provide the support for it and, and in, in some cases advocacy for people to get the help that they need. You use the word confidence quite a, a few times there. How do we become confident in asking the questions if we sense someone in our workplace or our family or our church might be struggling a bit? How do we get over the how are you doing? Oh I'm fine. How, how do we be confident in opening up those conversations? Uh, that's a great question, Esther. I think the thing I would say is it's good to rehearse it. And it's good to, I think, um, think about a few principles. First principle being, if someone approached me, how would I want them to do that? Second being, um, if I was to address this directly, but clearly and kindly, what would I say? For example, you might be saying, look, I've 
I've, I've noticed that you're not doing so well at the moment. And I'd like to talk to you about that. How are things at the moment? And I think the other thing I would say is as well as opening up um, a kind conversation around this, it may be about being willing to return to it. And if somebody says, no, I'm fine, I'm actually, I'm, I'm completely okay. If you notice that perhaps that they're not, you see some signs that may be, you know, there may be obvious signs that they're struggling, that you could say to them, listen, I'd love to check back on you and how that's going. Because I think often it's getting those conversations in even, and sometimes it's hard for us to acknowledge to ourselves that we're struggling and there may be a challenge that we're facing. But actually, if somebody else is noticing that, it it may then tip us to a point of action. And if then we can be of support to somebody in that, then that can be a wonderful thing to, I think, remove some of the stigma and taboo about getting help when it's needed. One of the uh, news stories today was that public satisfaction with the NHS has fallen to its lowest ever level. We know how stretched it is across the board with, with physical and mental health. Is it too much to expect that the NHS can do anything more uh, to help with mental health? Do we actually just need to, uh, to, to take on that responsibility ourselves in our communities and in our churches? Well, I think it's a balance, isn't it? Because the reality is that there are, are conditions that if we get the right help early, they, again, they can stop things declining. And also for many of us who might be dealing with a, a more complex diagnosis, it's very important that we get the right help at the right time. Really, really clear. You know, if you're unwell, that's the first, first port of call. But the reality, of course, because of the nature of our mental health, who we are in community, how we function in that space, how we're seen by others, where how we get to use our gifts, that which in many ways is just all a part of being human. It's actually really, really key to our ongoing mental health recovery. So I think we need to see ourselves as church communities, as people that can both be part of prevention when it's needed, perhaps help people get the support that they need that may be professional, but also be communities of recovery, you, you know, be the kind of places where, you know, um, you know, to use the phrase, it's okay not to be okay, and we can be okay with that, but also to be places where we're very mindful of the fact that, you know, we our communities that you know are called by God to be there for one another, to be there for our community, and that can be tremendously, tremendously positive in terms of our own well-being, particularly when we feel really part of that when we we get to use our gifts. Corin, thank you so much for joining us this morning. That's Corin Pilling from Sanctuary Mental Health. Do have a look online for all that they can offer your church to get confident, as he said, in dealing with mental health issues in ourselves and in our communities. Great to speak to you this morning, Corin. Thank you. Stay with us. Uh, it's OK not to be OK is one of the phrases they use here at the Cornerstone Cafe here in Carlisle for their uh, Renew Mental Health Wellbeing Cafe, which takes place tomorrow. We'll have some more stories from Cornerstone in just a moment. Discover more of the Bible with Premier's Bible in a Year podcast. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfilment in the kingdom of God. Premier's Bible in a Year podcast, available now on all platforms as well as Premier. Every time I come running, I find grace on repeat. You welcome me with open arms No matter where I have been Every time I surrender Every time I fall I find grace more precious than I did before So I'm gonna
We are live from the Cornerstone Cafe in Carlisle this morning. Premier Christian Radio is out and about today. This afternoon, you'll hear some stories of lives transformed in Sunderland, but we're the other side of the country here in Carlisle this morning. Uh, just to paint the scene for you, we're in the Cornerstone Cafe, which is a bright, colourful, modern corner, corner space right in the town centre here in Carlisle. At the moment, it is full of young people and children taking part in the free community breakfast which happens every Wednesday they are tucking into croissants and fruit and fruit juice and as it's holy week of course they've all been given an Easter egg as well so they're going to be buzzing on a sugar high as they go to school sorry about that teachers uh, but one of the parents who is here this morning we just spoke to her son Noah is uh, Becca good morning Becca good morning come a little bit closer to the mics it's quite noisy in the back Ground, all part of the happy buzz. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, obviously we're here on a special day. Tell me about Cornerstone in general. Why, why do you come? Why do you come with Noah? What does it do for you? Well, do you know, it is absolutely wonderful here. It's such, a, I've been reflecting on it and it's such a safe space. It's a place where you can come and if your child has a bit of a meltdown, you feel like you can let it happen. And um, they're so kind and loving and involved. They've been part of my journey since near the beginning, actually, my mum was involved in like the colour scheme here. Um, and as a parent, as a young, like I'm not a young parent, but with young children, I've got a five-year-old, nearly sick, like you heard, and I've got a two-year-old called Boaz. And it is just a space where if we're at, if we're not sure what to do, it's a place we can come, we can buy a filter coffee and a carton of juice for £1.10 and um, I'm not working so it is a wonderful space to just be and be out and everyone is so friendly and welcoming and you turn up and they know you and they walk they walk your walk with you as well and it is wonderful as well to come into here and meet people from different generations and different backgrounds and it really does feel like it really does feel like a church in the community it's it's church day by day um and it just makes a massive difference i know you've just been talking about mental health but i think having somewhere you can come and just say this is hard at the moment i haven't slept um it's really tricky and they just go we understand and it's a place where you share life and if you look around here there are tables where people are sitting with other people that they might not know. So I was sitting with someone that you're going to speak to later, Gareth, last week, and you get to share life together and you have those opportunities to maybe talk about God, but you, you're talking about life in general and walking the walk with people. What difference has it made to your faith, Becca? Well, it just encourages me. Um, I was listening to a song here and it wasn't even a Christian song. It was, um, we found love in a hopeless place and it was playing during one of the, one of the breakfasts. And it just, it's, it's been such a great lift when sometimes life feels hard and, um, it's encouraged me to see, um, God at work here and see it impacting other people's lives as well. And people here are always encouraging and willing to pray for you if you, if you ask for it or, um, it's not pushed on you, but it's there and it's wonderful. There must be quite a lot for the volunteers to have to pick up because you never know who's going to come through the door. Yeah. You never know what's been going on in, in their life. And I suppose for some people, they do just want a cheap coffee. Yes. Others, they've got a load to unpack. So how do you sense the volunteers sense that and know how to respond? I don't know. <laughs> I've got no idea. Um, I, think it's, I think it's just that we often get the same people in. There's often a lot of the same crew in here and so they learn through conversations and people open up when they feel comfortable don't they and because it is a safe place they open up to people and the, there's a variety of different volunteers that might be better at meeting different people's needs as well which is wonderful well, you can hear what a buzz it is here uh, at Cornerstone Cafe. Uh, thank you, Becca, for thank sharing you. what it thank means you. to you. Uh, we're going to go to the news now, but after that, we're going to hear some more incredible stories of what Cornerstone means uh, to people. We're broadcasting live from the Cornerstone Cafe in Carlisle as part of our premiere out and about day today. More brilliant stories coming your way. Premier Christian Radio, your voice of hope. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary, and now is the time to join us. 
AsiaLink empowers Christians in Asia to serve Jesus among their people. We're ready to send 25 Asian workers to share the gospel from Tajikistan to Thailand and from Pakistan to the Philippines. Your gift of £25 can help make it happen. Challenge 25 is on. Help 25 new Asian workers share the gospel in new places at asialink.org. It's a mic drop moment at Christian Conference Trust because we have some of the lowest prices around for all-inclusive quality venues. And this summer, Highly in the Haze will be joined by Highgate House in Northamptonshire, the UK's newest Christian Conference Centre. Visit cct.org.uk now. Christian Conference Trust, where the church gathers. It's the story that rocked the UK church. Allegations of power abuse levelled at sole survivor and its leader, Mike Plavacci. Learn what happened by hearing from those at the heart of it all. And find out how we, the church, can learn important lessons. Soul Survivors, a new podcast from Premier Christianity magazine. Download it today at premier.plus or find it on Apple, Spotify or your chosen podcast platform. This Lent... Journey with us as we unwrap spiritual disciplines to help your walk with Jesus. From worship to confession, reading your Bible, or deepening your prayer life, explore the many practices which can lead to a richer Christian life, right here on Premier Christian Radio. Three, two, one. This Easter, open your device, open your heart, and fall in love with Jesus all over again. Don't miss Speak Life's brilliant online course, 321. Boost your faith, boost your confidence, then share with friends. Discover life according to Jesus in 321. Begin 321 free today at 321course.com. Who says all gems need to be hidden? or all treasures need to be dug up. With the Christian Holiday Guide, maximize your reach and showcase your offerings to a targeted audience of faith-driven travelers. Expand your visibility, draw in potential guests, and list your property on our user-friendly platform for broader exposure. Find out more at christianholidayguide.co.uk and forge enduring connections within the Christian community. Let us reveal your hidden gem to the right audience. A nice dip in the sea, just me at one with the water. It's the best feeling in, in the... Help! Help! This, this, this current's pulling me out! Coast Guard! Someone's in trouble in the water. Okay, help's on its way. You're here. Next time I'm bringing a friend and my phone in a waterproof pouch. In an emergency at the coast, call 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. And please, respect the water. Premier Christian Radio, your voice of hope. On air, online and on digital, this is Premier Christian Radio. Hello, I'm Tola in Backwayne. Recovery efforts will resume this morning for six people who were presumed dead after a bridge collapsed in the U.S. city of Baltimore. They disappeared when a container ship lost power and crashed into the structure yesterday morning. Public satisfaction with the NHS has plummeted to its lowest level on record. Fewer than one in four people were happy with the service provided last year. Israel's military says it's examining claims a medical facility in Gaza was struck by one of its tanks. The IDF insists it fired at a site where terror activity was carried out, but hasn't provided any evidence of that. First-time buyers are being offered the chance to get onto the property ladder with a £5,000 deposit. Yorkshire Building Society says its fee-free deal could allow people to borrow up to 99% of a property value. It's reckoned as many as 8 million jobs in the UK could be lost to artificial intelligence. Analysis by the Institute for Public Policy Research suggests around three-fifths of tasks done by humans could be replaced by automation. 
And former President Donald Trump is now selling Bibles as he runs to return to the White House. Mr. Trump, who became the presumptive Republican nominee earlier this month, released a video yesterday urging his supporters to buy the God Bless the USA Bible. That's your Premier News update. You're tuned in to Inspirational Breakfast on Premier Christian Radio. You certainly are. Esther Hyam with you here and we are broadcasting live today from the Cornerstone Coffee Shop in Carlisle. It's a brilliant community outreach run by a team from St. James's Church and you can hear behind me the happy sounds of children buzzed up on chocolate eggs and a much healthier breakfast as well. It's part of their breakfast club that happens every Wednesday morning. We've been hearing about what Cornerstone means to people as well and I'm joined now by Lucy who popped in for breakfast First this morning, morning Lucy. Hiya. Tell me why you why you come to Cornerstone. Um, I used to work here before I damaged my spine, and it, after I, after I damaged my spine, they they still helped us, even though I couldn't work here anymore. Um, and I think they're a big part of the community, and they make everybody, um, like included, whether regardless of what background they come from. Um, so you don't actually have to be a Christian to come in like everyone's welcome and i think that's a big part of what christianity is i don't know fully because i'm not but they're um i think they really help everybody that comes in sometimes i think uh when christians and churches put on a project there's a sort of fear that people feel like oh they're just god botherers they're going to try and convert me have you, have you had that experience what, what do people around here think about the christians who are behind cornerstone um they, they get on with everyone um so there's no like Personally, I don't like preaching, um, depending on what type of preacher you are. Um, but they don't do any of that. Like, they do it because they're being good. They're being good people. Um, and my view on Christianity is that's what you're meant to do. You're meant to help people for God, I think. Not 100% on it. Um, but that's what they do. And they don't, they don't want anything in return. They just want you to, like, to come in, enjoy yourself and be part of be part of Cornerstone, like they offer a food bank um, when people can't get like a normal food bank with referrals and stuff, they, they offer help to anybody that needs it. Um, I think the the really important part of where we live. Has it made you think differently about church and God and those bigger picture things or, or not? Oh, absolutely. Um, I've, I've had various interactions with certain types of Christians and I've never liked it. Um, I was one myself when I was younger, but then I was turned off it. And here, it's kind of not all the same, um, which I should have that view anyway, but I don't. And these, everybody in Cornerstone and St. James's Church, they're, they're really passionate about people and like they love to help people, which you don't find in some Christian organisations. Well, I'm, I'm sorry that that's the case, but it sounds like doing a brilliant thing here. How's your back, by the way? It's all right. It's, you've made a recovery. Uh, no, but I'm fine. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much for joining us this morning and telling us what Cornerstone means to you. I'm going to need you to hand over the, the headphones yeah, no. to uh, uh, Sarah, who's joined us. Have a great day. Have you got an egg for your daughter as well? Because yeah. I know she could yeah. make it. To excellent. Good. <laughs> uh, well, as I, oh, we're doing a, a swap around of chairs as well is absolutely brilliant. Great to hear there from Lucy uh, what Cornerstone means to her and how it's helped her, you know, but, have a slightly different view of Christians having been her in the past, which is always so sad to hear. Uh, but great to hear that Cornerstone, that she's made been the heart of the Cornerstone community. Sarah joins me now. Morning, Sarah. Good morning. Tell me a little bit about how your journey with Cornerstone started. What what, start, what started you coming along here? So I first started coming about 11 years ago when my daughter was born because we lived in Denton Home, but I don't have any family in Carlisle, so I didn't really know anybody. And someone said to me, oh, they do a mum's group at Cornerstone. You should pop in and try that. And the mum's group didn't work the best for us with nap times and other classes that we were doing. But it was so welcoming that when we came, I was like, this is great. We're coming back here. You can get a coffee. You can sit and play with the kids. There was a great play corner. And we were here every Friday until she started school. After and when I finished maternity leave, we still kept coming back. And now it's just become such a part of her life that she comes with her friends by herself after school sometimes. And we still come as a family. It's just somewhere safe where she can come. You don't have to think that people are looking at you going, oh, her child's being loud. It's just safe and friendly. She knows everybody here by name. They all know her by name. They've seen her grow up. 
And I just think that's like a really important part of the community to have that safe space where you can go with your kid and just feel safe and not judged. And the fact that she's been able to grow with it, mm-hmm. that it's not just you go to a toddler club and then that's when the you go to school, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's really lovely. And it's been nice for me as well because I'm still quite early on my faith journey. So we do the messy church together. Um, I used to come to the Bible study group when that was here. And again, that was another nice safe space where you could come and you could ask all the silly questions that you want to ask. And nobody was like, oh, I can't believe, can't believe you don't know that. Mm. It was just lovely to come. And again, you could bring the kids to the the Bible study and they would just sit and play and everyone would make a fuss of them. And it was, again, just somewhere where you had that sense of community and someone that you could rely on. Because being a new parent's not easy. No, so no, I know how important those gatherings yes. are just to be with other parents. Exactly. So you said you're early on in, in your faith journey. Mm-hmm. What what began, what made you want to start exploring what, what it, Christianity was all about? It was coming here, really. Um, my mom's quite a strong Christian, but we weren't raised as a Christian family because my dad's an atheist. So when they were like, oh, well, you should come to Bible study, I was a bit uncertain because it just, I don't know, it just didn't like click at the time. And then I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose by coming and trying it. And if it, it doesn't feel like it's for me, then I don't have to come back. But actually, again, it was so safe and coming in and hearing it all was quite interesting. And then they saw there's a messy church as well that's slightly more boisterous. There's more people there, but you get tea. And I was like, okay, well, let's, let's give that a try. And actually, it's been really, really fun and quite useful. And, and is it making a difference in your life or are you just sort of uh, finding out about it kind of intellectually? Yeah, start I'm just with... kind of soaking it all in to start with now. Yeah. But it's I, I do find that I'm taking time to kind of think about stuff a bit more and trying to be calmer and kinder and think rather than being instinctive and really reactional, just like, right, hang on, what's the right thing to do here? How kind can I be? Because that is, you know, in my opinion, what you should be. You should try and be kind and try and look after everybody. So... If I can repay the favor that Cornerstone has paid me by making everyone feel safe and included, then I'm doing that and paying that forward. Amazing. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your story this morning. And as you say, it just feels like such a safe place and a place that people feel like is is theirs. I can mm-hmm. really get that sense uh, now as people start to clear out and uh, take their children off to school. This is almost it's a bit like a shared living room. It really is. Yeah. I mean, I've wandered off and left my bag in the corner and I'm not even worried about it because I know that it's going to be there when I get back. And there's not many places you can say that about. Wonderful. Sarah, thanks so much for sharing your story uh, this morning. Just another story of the difference that this uh, project Cornerstone in Carlisle is making to lives in the community. You can have uh, some other stories from that in just a moment. But uh, wherever you are listening uh, around the UK this morning, I'd love to know where should we come to next? It's an absolute joy being here in Carlisle this morning. But I know there's other brilliant projects, beautiful landmarks and amazing places that we should come and visit. If you want us to come and visit you, let me know. Studio at premier.org.uk text me double six triple seven starting your message with the word premier matt in birmingham says this you should come and visit us in the west midlands the pearl of the uk birmingham has changed so much in the last few years and it's been built up lots we've got some great thriving churches including gas street vineyard and hillsong plus great coffee at 22 degrees well that sort us out with the invitation there matt and we will come along more great stories coming to you from carlisle after a little bit of worship Premier Christian Radio, your voice of hope. Holy, holy, God Almighty, who was and is to come. God of glory, God of glory, you're so worthy, all saints bow down. Holy, 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 God Almighty. It was in years to come God of glory God of glory You're so worthy Oh, the saints bow down Holy is your name in all the earth The righteous are your way So merciful Everything you've done Is just and true Holy, holy
holy, holy God are you. 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 Quarter to nine, eight forty-five this Wednesday morning. A very special edition of Inspirational Breakfast, broadcasting live from the Cornerstone Cafe in Carlisle. It's an absolutely brilliant project, right on the corner uh, on a, a, a nice little shopping street close to the city centre. But here you'll find a food bank, you'll find free breakfasts on a Wednesday morning, little bits of worship, bits of Bible study, uh, a really brilliant way of reaching out to the community. And we've been finding, hearing some beautiful stories of lives transformed through what they're doing here. I want to introduce you to Gareth. Good morning, Gareth. Good morning. Oh, and Gareth is here with a beautiful bright yellow hoodie on, rather matching some of the uh, premier branding that we've got behind you. So you fit right intentional in. bit handing. It's a serendipitous moment. It certainly is. Gareth, tell me why you come to Cornerstone. What does it mean to you? Yeah, I've been coming to Cornerstone for about six months now. Um, I was pretty lost in my life before I found the church through here. Um, and it's been instrumental for me to... It was what got me into the church to begin with. It was very put across in a very positive but not pushy way, which really worked for me. Instead of being pushed into things, I felt like I was making the choices. And the freedom that this place has helped me find is amazing. Freedom, you say? Well, tell, tell me a little bit about that. I just feel a lot freer in my life. I don't have the old problems that I used to have dragging me down feel that like I've got a new hope in life with finding faith and finding the church. And did someone say, oh, check out Cornerstone, or did you wander past one day looking for a coffee? What brought you in in the first place? Yeah, I was just wandering, really. I was on a day where I had nothing to do and I was feeling pretty lost, and I come in and met David, um, and we just started, got talking, developed a friendship from there. And then did he say, come along to church, or did you get involved with something here at the cafe? Um, no, I asked about the church because I was pretty curious, and I got a really good answer, which was, I like it, which gave me impetus. It wasn't pushy, it wasn't being too forward, and wasn't, um, think of the word, yeah, pushy. It was very, done very much at my own pace, which would have put me off if it hadn't been any pushing us along the way. But I was lucky there wasn't, and I've found faith now. you found faith now? I have, yeah. Tell me what that means to you. What does that look like for you? It's brand new to me. I've only been a Christian for six months. Um, thank you. And it is a total change in the way of my lifestyle and the things I do and believe in. What's changed for you, are you happy to say? Yeah, my whole life's changed, really. I was um, living pretty much in a, I was in a bad place. I was doing drink and drugs every day. I was lost and I didn't have any direction at all. Um, and this place just helped me turn my life around completely. That's so encouraging to hear. What what did what did Christianity, Jesus, God, what did that all look like for you before? Do you had encounters with it or had it not been part of your life at all? No, um, when I grew up, my mum had degenerative illness and I felt pretty undone by God. I felt that I'd been cheated somehow. Um, but through the years, that's kind of I've worked out that, you know, things are out of control. We should just put faith in God that the best happened. Um, and what was it that sort of changed your view of God? Did you, did you get a, a, just a different view of him? Did something click for you or did you feel like you experienced him through his spirit? Yeah, I'm very, the first time I went to church was very profound and very moving. I found myself crying and just feeling that it was something so joyous and so right that I knew that I'd be going back, that it'd be life-changing for me. And you said you'd, you'd had some issues with, with alcohol and drugs. How How is your faith and how is Cornerstone supporting you out of that? Because that's not an easy journey, is it? No, it's not an easy journey and I'm getting lots of support. Everybody's willing to give support. They're very friendly crew down here. It's like having a new family, which is an important Cornerstone. It says it is everything it says it is. 
is the basis of my, my getting better, my recovery. Well, we wish you so well with that. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You. I can see how much Cornerstone means means to you. Um, and, and what's next for you? Um, I'm at the beginning of a journey. I don't know what's next, but I'm quite excited to find out. So we'll just leave it at that, really, I think. Bless you. Thank you so much, Gareth. Lo so lovely to meet you. Your Thank story's you. really inspiring, and I know it'll encourage someone listening this morning who's maybe in the same place as you or has been in that place. I'd, to know that there's hope. I'd love to hope that my story can help improve somebody's life and maybe give a bit of inspiration along the way. I feel like it's a very positive thing. Yeah, well, you've certainly inspired me. Gareth, thank you so much. Thank you. Gareth is uh, part of the family here at Cornerstone in Carlisle, and I know his story will have touched you uh, just as it has me. Uh, we've just got a few minutes left, though, here of our live breakfast here in Cornerstone. Uh, we're going to close with a prayer in a minute. Coming up on this Easter Sunday, I want to celebrate the event without which there would be no faith, no church, no Christians and no hope. It is, of course, resurrection, the power of God to give life. Out of all the enemies of life on earth, death has to be the greatest and resurrection the ultimate answer. Join me, John Pantry, for A Word in Season here on Premier Christian Radio at 8.30pm this Sunday as we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. Hola, Nina, that you're a woman of the cloth. Tell me what you do. Okay, so I'm an associate priest here um, at St. James and, and St. Luke in Carlisle. Wonderful. Yeah. And so you're, are you part of the team here at Cornerstone or did you just pop in for a quiet coffee this morning? I do come. I've, yes, I help out with the Renew Cafe that we run here on Thursday mornings, which is like a well-being cafe. It's just a safe space for people just to come and be in the presence of others. And um, yeah, yeah, so that's one of the things that I've been helping out with the um, just volunteering and um, yeah, yeah, support and work in different ways and always love popping in and, and just having a chat and yeah, it's just a, we've such a special about, place. We've been talking a little bit about mm -hmm. mental health mm -hmm. a bit earlier in mm -hmm. this hour mm -hmm. and how important projects like uh, a Renew Wellbeing Cafe are. What, what have you noticed from, from working with that? What, what, how does something like just meeting together and having a coffee, how does that help with issues of mental health? I think what I've noticed that people come <clears throat> nervous and then within weeks they start connecting and you can just see almost this sort of sigh of relief and there is a sense of peace and you know i think we, we mustn't undervaluate undervalue just that um strength of of being present being present and connected. being present and connected and um, and people have literally said well this has kind of saved my life this has really made a difference that's because so you are accepted and, and you can come as you are. And yeah, I think there was, you can, you can just feel that sort of sense of calm <laughs> descending in people's hearts. And yeah. And what I love it's about beautiful. this place is that this morning we've had all the buzz of oh, yes. the children in for, for breakfast and all their parents and carers as well. Mm -hmm. And then I could come tomorrow and it would feel different because actually yes. have that sense of peace. Well, that's just yes. wonderful. Yeah. Can we ask you, Nina, if you wouldn't mind mm. uh, helping us pause for prayer right now? Are you happy to do that? Sure, sure. Okay. So, Lord, we do thank you for your presence, in particular in this place, and um, pray for your blessing for each person who comes. And we we pray in for our community in here and just yeah. within our country, Lord, that you would know your presence, we would know your love. And we thank you that you came for this this holy week as we celebrate your um, your coming, your giving yourself for us. And the victory of over over death and over all the all the obstacles, Lord, that you have made way for us to know you and um, and and be friends with you. And so we do um, just ask for um, more of your presence in our lives and um, and and anyone to bring your, your your comfort and your presence to uh, difficult places. In particular, Lord, we lift anyone who is just really feeling um, that sense of despair and loneliness and ask that you would come and um, make yourself known. 
Amen. Amen. Reverend Nina, thank you so much for uh, popping in, interrupting your coffee to pray with us this morning. The fun carries on here on Premier Christian Radio today. Uh, great teaching coming up from uh, Dr. Michael Youssef and the Briscoes uh, later on, uh, from between 9 and 10. And then from 10, Maria's here. And she'll be talking to John Kirkby, who went from a challenging childhood to founding Christians Against Poverty. Do join that conversation. And then very, something very fun happened happening this afternoon. Ian Britton has been with me here in Carlisle, but you're hoofing back to Sunderland later on and you're going to be bringing us some stories from Sunderland. What's in store this afternoon, Ian? Well, fortunately, with that, that part in the country where it's really narrow, that's, of course, why Hadrian built this wall. So uh, it's only going to take me uh, an hour and 20 minutes to be back from the West Coast to the East Coast. And it's great being out and about. And of course, this afternoon we're in Sunderland. We've got uh, nine different people to meet. They've all got uh, stories about what God's doing through his people in Sunderland and uh, some personal testimonies as well. So really looking forward to it. Uh, it's a great city and uh, it'll just be really interesting to, to hear these stories of God at work. Can't wait to hear more of those. I'm just going to call over Andy. Andy. <laughs> Andy is the, corner, the manager here at Cornerstone Cafe. Andy, I just want to Hello. say a huge thank you. Oh, you you're very you, welcome. You've put us up, you've uh, you put up with us, you've, <laughs> you've fed us with coffee, and it's just been incredible hearing uh, the stories of God at work through Cornerstone. Final word from you. What, what are your hopes for the future of Cornerstone? Um, it's just engaging more of our community, showing Christ's love to those around us. Um, just yeah, just as you saw earlier, the, the buzzy atmosphere of the breakfast. Uh, we're seeing we're engaging with a lot of non-Christians, and, and and I just think more of that really, more connecting with those who don't know Christ, um, showing Christ's love in a positive way, whether that's through a breakfast or through our well-being cafe that we run, or through the food bank, or, or all these different things, and um, and just yeah, being that lighthouse in our community really. I can tell what a lighthouse you are and it's been absolute joy being here. Thanks so much for having us. Very welcome. Thank you for coming. Thanks so much for joining us wherever you've been listening from in the country. Keep your invitations coming, please, because we'd love to get out and about and come and visit you where you are. So do let us know where we could come, studio at premier.org.uk. Uh, but stay with us right throughout the day, as Ian Britton said, more fantastic stories of God at work in the North East this time coming up this afternoon in daytime with Josh. So don't miss that. And uh, do enjoy your day. Toller's got the news after this. Premier Christian Radio.